AK8BYP with a video on doorknobs, doorknob capacitors. And when SCA is doing what real hams do, taking apart an old RF tube amplifier and rebuilding it. And part of that is looking at replacing the doorknob capacitors and finding out how bloody expensive they are. Just start for round numbers at a hundred bucks a piece. I would not want to try to afford one of those. Doorknobs are different from ordinary disc ceramic capacitors. They're intended for RF coupling, not necessarily bypass. Because a bypass application is generally lower, lower energy and we don't care about losses. The entire point of a bypass is to try to get a total loss of RF at some point. What's different about doorknobs is high voltage, 15 kV, 20 kV, 30 kV, ceramic bodies, screw terminals. The parameters of a capacitor are capacitance, capacitance tolerance, voltage, uh, ESR equivalent series resistance maybe the form there's a probably a thousand volt spray disc ceramic this is a doorknob form but what's different with doorknobs where we can run into serious trouble with them is that these are RF capacitors these aren't these are just general coupling general decoupling or nothing fancy. They're ceramic dielectric. The doorknobs may be or are probably mica, sheet mica. But the problem with doorknobs is that they also have ratings for maximum peak RF current, maximum frequency, and the loss tangent or tangent delta or tan D which describes how much loss the capacitor has. And for any decent capacitor from a decent manufacturer, there should be a graph that shows a loss per frequency. The trouble I ran across when designing my uh, single tube 3-400 ground to grid amp is that I don't have any idea what these are. There's the, the stated values, <clears throat> 15 kV DC, 50 picofarad, micro microfarads, picofarad, MP0. <clears throat> but I don't know anything beyond that. What I found when searching for modern doorknobs is that in general, they're not rated for amateur HF use. They're rated for low frequency use. There were some that started getting up towards 10 meters, but the problem is the losses. Losses go up because of the type of dielectric. <clears throat> Mica is fairly lossy. What the loss means is that for a certain RF current, for a certain reactance, for a certain loss tangent, there's gonna be so much heat. And all these capacitors are encapsulated in insulation. That helps prevent people from dying. Some modern capacitors are available uncoated. <clears throat> the purpose of that is to get rid of heat. But I couldn't find any doorknobs that would work up to uh, 10 meters, 28 megahertz. And I was actually shooting for 50. Yes, they'll work. Yes, they might get hot. And um, if there's too much loss and they get too hot, they can be damaged. They can crack. They can change value, explode, do whatever. And these things are awfully expensive to be taking that kind of gamble with. Uh, one company I found made doorknobs mainly for AM broadcast frequencies, a couple megahertz. I need 50. If I'm going to have an amplifier that goes to 6 meters, the capacitors have to be good for those frequencies. So I put all these away, even though there's several thousand bucks worth of capacitors here. 
So I put the doorknobs away. Parts from WB4 CTW, by the way. And go on the old edge in amateur radio if you can't make it or, or can't buy it, build it. There's a RF enclosure for the amplifier I'm working on. Plate and uh, cathode chokes. Enclosure for a plug-in <clears throat> board for each band. But I'm experimenting with making my own doorknobs. And um, the principle is pretty simple. Just uh, copper disc <clears throat> and insulators. Kind of like the idea of the old selenium rectifier stacks. Held together with a screw and a nut and a washer. That is... <clears throat> 146 picofarad stack, one, two, three, four, five copper discs, <coughs> and it's adjustable. Between these discs, there's sheets of uh, polystyrene sheet from the Javi model world. And down here, the sheet goes partway through for adjustability. It's like a uh, kind of like a, a shim. Part of the space between these two plates here is plastic, part is air. So part of the dielectric is is uh, polystyrene, the other part's air. So moving the polystyrene back and forth in and out changes the capacitance. These are copper discs <clears throat> from uh, Hobby and Craft Supplies online. Several websites have them. They're just plain stamped copper disc. I had to drill holes through them to put the screw through the center. It's a bit of a problem to try to put this together and clamp it. It's um, polystyrene material <clears throat> is a very good RF dielectric. So are high density and low density polyethylene. And surprisingly enough, the very best one is Vaseline. And that was one of the first ones used back in the early days of radio. <clears throat> Petroleum grease. The trick to these, which absolutely must be observed, is to drill these at the center hole with a uh, drill bit used for drilling plastic. It has the uh, three sharp points. Don't use an ordinary twist drill bit. It'll badly distort the center. But drill out the center hole. And then any surface of these that contacts the dielectric must be absolutely smooth. Smooth as glass. No sharp points, no burrs. Where this is drilled, there can't be pull through. <clears throat> these discs will be slightly concave because of the way they're stamped. So the, they have to be put in the right order, concave, convex, concave, convex, to make the most contact with the dielectric. Otherwise, the capacitance will be low. But any sharp points on that copper will go right through that soft plastic. And those sharp points make tremendous uh, field concentrations, electrical field. <clears throat> And can very easily arc through that plastic. Once it does, it's all over. It's going to burn. First arc sets it up, starts it, burns the dielectric, leaves a path, and it's just a free for all after that. Basically, just gross breakdown and arcing and shorting. <clears throat> so the uh, surfaces must be like a mirror. No burrs. That takes a fair amount of doing. Be better to buy them with the center hole punched. <clears throat> that costs a little bit more. Another thing to watch for is a chance for arcing in the center here. The holes in the disc are oversized. So if I take that nut off and look down in, I'll see the, the washer. And then inside the hole of the washer, there's plastic. The uh, holes, I think, were 3 eighths, if I remember correctly. I think that's a quarter screw, and I think the holes in the plastic are a quarter. So those inside 
edges of those holes can't see each other for an arc path. Very important. That's a nylon screw, very high voltage. But these sheets of uh, 10 thousandths, 20 thousandths, 30, 40 thousandths poly, polystyrene are <clears throat> will make this capacitor assembly rated for, in theory, based on a dielectric withstand up to about 20 kV. So way high voltage. Uh, the loss tangent is rated <clears throat> in the numbers such as 0 0.01. Uh, the thing is to find the frequency, find, calculate the reactance, multiply the reactance by the loss tangent. That gives you the loss reactance more or less. <clears throat> multiply that by the current, and it'll give you an idea of how many watts worth of heat are dissipated. Here, there's lots of exposed copper area for cooling. In the encapsulated ones, there aren't. Of course, there won't be any cooling where the plastic's touching it, but I've spaced in between the two pairs in there. So those, those plates have airflow. But um, but that's two, three, four, five times the, the voltage rating of the uh, commercially available doorknob units, unless they get extremely expensive. These, I don't know, these might be well over a hundred bucks to buy one of these like this. Maybe high, maybe two hundred. I don't know. They they kind of start around fifty. There's the polystyrene sheet from Hobby Lobby, Evergreen modeled, and uh, avoid getting plastic that has color added. That can change. That will will change the RF properties of the plastic. Probably increase the loss. But uh, sheets of ten, twenty, forty thousands. Plastic sheets can be had <clears throat> in various thicknesses. Don't use PVC. It's too lossy. Way too lossy. But uh, get online, look up the dielectric properties and loss tangent for various plastics and read about it. But, um, I don't know, a dollar a disc. Uh, two, three, four, five bucks for discs. A couple of bucks for plastic. The biggest problem is getting the connecting wires. On the outside plates, obviously, just solder to the outside. But on the inside plates, I used a mill insert and a drill, <clears throat> and I milled a step down in the disc, and then soldered uh, solder braid to it. So, of course, that makes a place for arcing, so those need to have plastic between them. But uh, for, for 20 kV withstand, and I'm working at around 5 kV, that should be plenty. I realize with RF, it's got to be a combination of AC plus DC voltage on a capacitor, not one or the other. The reason is the dipole moments in the dielectric take time to change, so it's cumulative. So, there's a doorknob story. KBYP did it.